All right, hello, and welcome to my home office. Uh, unlike Mr. Lincoln, where he needs to be quiet because of the people sleeping in his house, I'm going to apologize right now for any background noise that you might hear. I live very close to the Brown Line train in Chicago, and it's still running, so you might pick up some background noise as we go. Uh, so here we are hitting the slopes. Get it? Slope fields, slopes. My math jokes are still going to be around, ladies and gentlemen. My math jokes are still around. Uh, we're going to do a couple of problems together today. Some of them, it's going to be one of those, like, I do one problem to show you, and then pause, and you try an example on your own. Your AP classroom assignment today is a little bit shorter than yesterday, and most of them are just setup questions. They're not actually going through and doing the calculus with them. So we'll get to that a little bit in just a minute. So to start, um, your packet printed a little funky. Make sure that this part is actually over here with this question, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna have you start and see if you can find the error in this student work. So take a second to look through that. Uh, also think about what would the first step be to find the general solution? And then what would the first step be in this one to find the general solution? So pause your video, see if you can answer those three questions for yourself. Pause now. All right, so for the first one, I circled two things in red. Uh, the six right there should be a plus or minus six because that plus minus to answer thing happens from taking the square root, uh, which means I also circled the bottom of the plus minus two because the student was just like, oh shoot, I needed a plus minus in there somewhere. Let me just throw it in. So that's also incorrect. Uh, for both of these ones, I'm gonna say that overall, the first step would be to separate your variables. We are gonna be working with separable, vari separable differential equations. Uh, which means that we can separate our x's together and our y's together and then do the calculus necessary to get to our function. Okay, so y dy and 6 dx, 1 over 6 y dy and dx. This one you would need a u sub right here, okay, and then we'd have something with logarithms. So the moral of the story is to step one, separate variables. And then I'm gonna say, don't forget plus C. So this plus minus thing here that I was throwing on is some students go through and they do all of this work to solve the entire differential equation. And then at their end, at the end, they're just like, oh shoot, I need a plus C, okay? Make sure you show the plus C when you are supposed to be finding it, which is right after you take the antiderivative. All right, suppose the rate of change, you know, to be slope of a population Y is directly proportioned proportional to the value of y. So I'm gonna first thing, I'm gonna have you change this to a dt. So what this is saying is the change in the population over the change in time. Well, that's supposed to be directly proportional, which means that we're gonna have some k value, some multiple every single time in respect to y, because the rate of change of the population is directly proportional to the value itself. So what that means is that over time, your population's rate is being multiplied and multiplied and multiplied by this k that we have as our direct proportionate. Uh, all right, so find the general solution for y. So the first thing is I'm gonna separate my variables. So I'm gonna get one over y dy equals, there's k times t. Ooh, sorry, k times dt. I'm going to take the antiderivative. So on this side, I get the natural log of the absolute value of y. This side, I'm going to get kt plus c. Okay, well, right now, if I was looking for c, I would plug in my t and my y to be able to find it. But right now, I'm going to solve for y because it says find the general solution. So I'm supposed to get y by itself. I'm going to e both sides. This will just be y equals. This then is e to the kt plus c. I'm gonna do kind of a weird mathematical step, but I want you to stay with me. I'm gonna write this as e to the kt times e to the c. And the reason I'm doing that is because e to the c is really just some brand new constant. And so when I actually write this as a solution solved for y, I have c e to the kt. Now, some students ask what happens to this absolute value? Well, the absolute value is important if you were finding the C originally, which we would do, okay? Um, it also, remember, is there as a kind of a safeguard with domain to make sure that we're not taking the natural log of anything that is less than or equal to zero. 
This should hopefully look familiar to you. So I guess I just need to scroll down. This should hopefully look familiar to you from previous studies. If dy dt is equal to k times t, then y itself will be equal to c e to the k t, which should be looking like your amount is equal to your initial value p e r, your rate t, right? So compounding continuously or continuous population growth all of those things are happening because you are repeatedly multiplying. You are repeatedly multiplying by some value k as it relates to the population. All right, so let's try one. If dy dt equals 5y, find the general solution solved for y. Then find the particular solution if we know that when t equals 4, y equals 200. All right, so right away, I know this is going to turn into y equals c e to the 5 t okay now if you're not a big memorizer totally fine let's actually go through the steps of that so i'm going to say dy is equal to 5 i'm going to divide the y to the other side and multiply the dt to that side so then i take the antiderivative i'm going to get the natural log of y equals 5 t plus c and then I do that e to both sides. So I'm going to get y equals c e to the 5t. Or you can just make the shortcut. All right, so then it says that we're supposed to find the particular solution if we know when t is 4, y is 200. I personally would like to find c from this line. But if you want to find c from this line, you can as well. Um, so if we go through and we find our c value, we know that the 200, I'm going to use this one for right now, 200 is equal to C E to the 20th because 5 times 4 is 20, which means that C itself is equal to 200 over E to the 20th. We're just going to leave that as an exact answer, which means our particular solution is Y equals 200 over E to the 20th e to the 5t. And now from there, you could do a little more cleanup. Some people were asking about this in AP Classroom about getting things to match. e to the 5t over e to the 20th, you would subtract your exponents. So another version of this answer might say 200e to the 5t minus 20. Okay, and that's properties of exponentials from pre-calculus and AAA. All right, so this next one, um, it says, if y equals c e to the kt, find the specific exponential function if we know all of this information. Well, what's important here is you want to pull out some coordinate points. We know that our function has to go through the point 0, 2. We also know that our function has to go through the point 2, comma 4. And so what that allows us to do is to set up an equation. So I'm going to use the initial condition. Oops. Try that again. I'm going to use the initial condition. 2 is equal to c e to the k times 0. Well, anything to the 0 power is just going to be 1, which means that c is equal to 2, which makes sense because our initial condition, right, at time 0, we have a value of 2. Now what I can do is I can use this other point to help me find my k value. So I know this 2 is staying there. I now have e to the k times 2. Using all of my knowledge from pre-calculus, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I get the natural log of 2, swing down 2k times the natural log of e. That's going to go away. k is equal to the natural log of 2 over 2, which you can leave it like that. Um, or you can store it in your calculator as a decimal, right? So it has, it goes on forever and it won't repeat and we don't get any rounding errors going on there. Um, all right, so I want you to try B, C, and D. These should all be practiced from pre-calculus. So we now have our new equation, y equals 2e to the natural log of 2 over 2 times t. Go ahead and answer B, C, and D.
pause your video. All right, I've got all my work shown in the answers, so hopefully that went okay for you. If not, that would be a good thing to post in the discussion board and work out with your teacher. All right, so let's talk about story problems a little bit. Um, we're gonna do the same thing that we just did. I'm gonna help you pull out the important information and then see if you can write the equation finding your C and your K. So it says that four months after it stops advertising, a manufacturing company notices that his sales have dropped from 100,000. So we started with $100,000 in sales. And after four months, we are down to 80,000. If the sales follow the pattern of decline, an exponential, so we're gonna start with Y equals C E to the K T, what will the sales be after another two months? So at time six, what are our sales? So I want you to go through and I want you to see if you can find what C is equal to, what K is equal to, and then what is gonna go on at time six. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining these because this is technically pre-calc review. This is just reinforcing the idea that exponential growth comes from dy dt equals ky. So pause your video, see if you can work this one out. All right, here's what we've got worked out. Um, I do wanna point out that if you use the exact value of K, you're gonna get this number. And if you use the rounded value of K, you're gonna get that number, but both of them would be acceptable. Um, and you'd know pretty quickly from the multiple choice answers which one you're supposed to pick. All right, this one's gonna look a little bit different. Suppose an experimental population of fruit flies increases according to the law of exponential growth. There were 100 fruit, blah, 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 fruit flies on the second day of the experiment, and on the fourth day, there were 300. How many fruit flies ooh, were in the initial population? Well, something we can do here is we can consider exponential growth you know, on an x, y curve, and instead of calling this 2, 100, let's go ahead and use this as our initial condition. Well, if 0, 100 is a point on our curve, then we have the point 2, 300, and the point I'm actually looking for is negative 2, comma, mystery. So I'm just doing a horizontal shift, so to speak, of my data points because I know every exponential curve is going to look like this, and I'm just choosing what point do I use as, like, my anchor. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video. See if you can work out what C is supposed to be equal to and find your k value and then figure out what's going on at time t equals negative two. All right, check it out. Maybe re-pause your video if you need to look it over. Uh, I'm gonna move on though to the next one. All right, that switched pretty fast. I'll leave you here for a second longer, but you really might wanna pause your video. Due to time constraints, uh, we're gonna set this one up, but then I'm gonna do example six in a different video because that one is something called Newton's Law of Cooling, which is similar, but slightly different. So let's pull out our important information about the population of Nevada. So 1987 is what I'm gonna call time zero. We had a population of 1.23 million. As of 2017, which would be 30 years later, we're at 2.998. We eventually want to know what will the population be in 2025. Well, 2025 in relation to 1987 is 38 years later. Also, we want to know when will the population equal 6 million. So go ahead and set up. We're talking about exponential growth. Keep in mind that populations don't always find, follow the same pattern forever, right? I mean, that's the whole idea about this flattening the curve with COVID is that exponential growth usually is the start of a logistic curve and then it'll eventually smooth out. But for right now, we're gonna go with this information. So go ahead and pause your video. See if you can tell me what's going on in 2025 and when will the population reach 6 million? Pause now. All right, and here are my solutions. So again, I'm gonna do number six in another video. It'll be quick, I promise. And then Keep in mind that all of these, we wanna think about what does Y represent and what does T represent? So some of the questions you're gonna be asked in AP Classroom are just what would dy dt being equal to something represent? And they're really just thinking questions, right? Think about dy dt would represent the rate of change of Y, dp dt would represent the change in population, and it's kind of a working out the problems from there. Don't forget to watch example six, it's important. Bye.